Good afternoon. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Mike Brubaker. I'm an elder on session here at Gettysburg Presbyterian Church. I'd like to welcome all of you to the installation service for J. Caleb McClure as our new senior pastor and head of staff. Um, as co-chair of the pastor nominating committee here at GPC, I can say that we were thrilled to get to know Caleb throughout the process of finding our new senior pastor. It was a wonderful process to be part of and allowed us to get to know him better as a person ourselves as people on the committee, and as well as the direction of the church that we think God is leading us to in the future. I believe we have several members of the PNC in the audience today. Uh, if you would stand uh, and just wave a hand, including my co-chair Kelly Jones in the back. I believe I speak on behalf of the whole congregation when I say that it's been a wonderful experience having Caleb as our pastor these last few months, getting to know him and getting to know his family. And I look forward to the ways that God is leading him and us together in the future, wherever that direction may be. Um, I'd like to thank everyone for coming today to this special event, and especially warm welcome to Caleb's friends, family, and former colleagues. I know some of you have tried to travel quite a far way to get here, so I know it's much appreciated. Uh, for those of you who may be watching on our live stream, I believe a copy of the liturgy and the bulletin is available on our website. There won't be a PowerPoint to follow along, so if you, if you want to go out there and get it, you can. And after the service, please exit through these doors into Fellowship Hall where there will be a reception. It'll be an opportunity for you to congratulate Caleb, uh, get to meet some of his friends and colleagues that have visited from out of town, as well as enjoy some light drinks and refreshments. Thank you. I want to invite everyone who is joining us online to adopt a posture of worship while those of us gathered here stand for the call to worship. As Christians, we believe that discipleship is a choice. Choose this day who you will serve, said Joshua. As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Disciples commit themselves to temperance, service, justice, and mercy. The day that pray, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Disciples know the power of God's ingenuity, grace, and love. Isaiah wrote, they shall renew their strength. They shall Even so, the disciples' path is fraught with challenge and confusion. Do you not see, Jesus said to the disciples, do you still not understand? The disciples' road often includes grief, fear, and doubt. As disciples, we can only remember who and whose we are. All encouraged to me, for God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather a spirit of power, of love, and of self-discipline. God of disciples, ancient and new, we enter your courts with praise and thanksgiving. Your discipleship call echoes down through the ages. As you chose us, so we choose you. As you love the world, so we love the world. We set our feet to the disciples' road. See now, we mount with wings of eagles. Let us join in hymn 482, Praise ye the Lord the Almighty.
this worship road, leaning into the grace of Almighty God, getting honest with ourselves and with our God above, the God who provides mercy and grace and forgiveness. We call ourselves into this time of confession. Eternal God, maker of the skies above, lowly Christ, lover of the earth and its people, unfettered spirit, giver of gracious gifts. O oh, hidden mystery, sun behind all suns, soul within all souls, in all we touch, in all we meet, you are present among us. As bearers of your image, we come to be reshaped, dependent on your mercy. For the right roads we avoided traveling, and the kindly words we refused to share, for the false gods who received our worship and the true selves we have starved of love, God, by your grace. For the hidden hurts we have held too tightly and the promises which we never kept, for the careless use of our time and money and the lame excuses we should never have made, God, by your grace. For all we should be and all we can amend, God, in your love. In for all you have in store for us and all you may demand of us, God, in your love. Prepare. For the life of the world and the love of its people, God, in your love. Prepare. Hear and believe these words of Jesus. Your sins are forgiven. Go in peace. Come and follow me. Glory to the creator who gives us life. Glory to Jesus, whose love remakes us. Glory to the Spirit and the hand of our enemies. Glory to God. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Please greet one another. Let us pray. Draw us close, Holy Spirit, as the scriptures are read and the word is proclaimed. Let the wonders of your words of faith be on our lips and in our hearts. May we hear with deep gladness your voice of truth and grace. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our first scripture reading today is from the Old Testament. Joshua chapter 24, verses 14 through 15. Listen now to God's word for you. Now therefore, revere the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. Now, if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve 
whether the gods your ancestors served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. The New Testament reading comes from Mark chapter 16, verses 1 through 8. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid them laid him, my apologies, but go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him just as Jesus told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb for terror and amazement had seized them and they said nothing to no one for they were afraid. This is the word of God for the people of God. Choir, thank you so much. That was beautiful. Everybody give God some praise for our choir and for our time to hear together today. No? It's all. So for
first of all, I just want to say what a deep joy and privilege it is to be here with you all today to, for the installation of J. Caleb McClure here at Gettysburg Presbyterian Church. I also want to thank you all as I fix my robe and stole and tangle with all these things. I just want to thank you so much for the warm welcome that I've received here today. I first came to know Caleb while he was pursuing his uh, dual Master of Divinity and Master of Arts in Christian Education at Union Presbyterian Seminary uh, while he and I were both working in the advancement office. And Caleb worked in the office for the general fund under Mr. Rob Buys. And Caleb was so good at his job, as you might imagine, <laughs> that I wanted to steal him. And so I would ask his Mr. Buys, could I borrow Caleb for this task? And Rob would say, sure, yeah, you can borrow Caleb. Well, over a course of a year, I stole Caleb. <laughs> and he came to work in my office, um, in the events and communications office, for three more years while he finished his degree. While we were working together, um, Caleb and Sam, and I should say, at the same time, Sam was pursuing her nursing degree. I just want to lift that up, too. But at this time, um, they had their firstborn, Olivia. Bingo. <laughs> <laughs> and Caleb would bring Olivia to the office and we as staff members would all take turns watching her because, um, you know, there's nothing better than watching a baby when you have work to do. <laughs> uh, I really love the third photo because Olivia's starting to look at me like, hey, what are you getting me into? And uh, so I just love that expression that she's giving me. Um, the McClure family and I share a few affinities. Um, one is our love of church and Jesus, and another affinity is our love of Star Wars. Um, and while Caleb was working in my office, I gave him the nickname Baba. Not Baba Fett, not Jabba, not Jawa, but Baba. And I want to invite you to say it with me now. Baba. There you go. <laughs> When Caleb and I first began planning this service together, he sent me a series of passages that he was currently vibing on. And I'll show you this. I hope you can see these. Um, this passage from Joshua 14, Choose This Day, we heard that one. Isaiah 40, which is um, all, you know, that you, they shall run and not grow weary, they shall walk and not grow faint, they will mount up with wings of eagles. Psalm 19 is a psalm written by David, and it is a psalm nothing about but how wonderful God is, and, the, and this psalm ends with these words, may the, write the meditations of my word, uh, the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my what? My rock and my redeemer. Uh, Mark 6, 21, Caleb starts to tell me some stuff. 21, um, he's talking about how he can relate to both Jesus and the disciples. They're in an argument in this passage. I'm not going to get into that right now. Um, Mark 16, 1 through 8, which we're going to spend some time exploring, and then Philippians 4, finally, beloved, what is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. I want to tell you something about Caleb. He sent me these passages, and if you think about these passages as a summary, you can find the through line to discipleship. Choice, praise, gratitude, devotion, confusion, <laughs> running, we're going to get that, and excellence. That is who you've chosen. That is who you're installing. I want to call your attention to the lower part of the slide, the section about Mark 16. Caleb calls it the OG ending. If you don't know what OG means in slang, it means the original gangsta. It's the original gangsta ending of Mark 16, 1 through 8. And it is without a doubt the most troubling ending to a gospel that we have. It's maybe one of the most troubling passages in the Bible entire, beginning at verse 6. But the young man in a white robe said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look there in the place they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. 
So this is it, right? Verse 8. They went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. They said nothing to no one. They were afraid. And then, mark out. Mic drop. We, just as members of the early church, are left with terror, amazement, disciple women running from the tomb in silence, and they call it good news. So unsettling was this good news that according to scholars, the early church authors began adding verses. President of Union Presbyterian Seminary and Markian scholar, Reverend Dr. Brian K. Blunt, who Caleb and I both had the privilege of serving under, writes these words. The early Christians couldn't abide by such a curt, stark, open ending. They needed happiness. They needed victory. They needed triumph. They needed a few more verses. So they supplied them. They supplied the kind of ending they figured Mark would have supplied had he understood the kind of consternation his kind of ending ultimately caused. They fiddled around until they got the ending of Mark just right. They added verses about snake handling and resurrection appearances and faithful disciples in verses 9 through 20. So the story could end happily ever after. You see some um, artistic um, representations of Mark 9, uh, 16, 9 through 20 here. We have Mary Magdalene talking to the apostles, though they don't believe her. Um, we have uh, Jesus meeting two disciples on the road. We have the Great Commission. The Great Commission is added. It's not part of the OG ending. Added. And we have the Ascension also added. When I saw the passage that Caleb had chosen, I thought, here it is, my dear Baba, who is not afraid of terror or amazement or the running of disciples. Baba is ready to venture into the most uncomfortable, disconcerting, challenging places of the gospel, and he invites all of us to do the same. While Caleb and I were working together in the Office of Advancement at Union Presbyterian Seminary, we had a co-worker with a house at Lake Anna at which she and her family often spent the holidays, and they were gone for so long, they would often take the family cat, Milo, with them. <clears throat> One year, Susan returned from the holidays crestfallen, saying and in the midst of a heavy snowfall, Milo had gone missing in the wilds of Lake Anna, and they had to return to Richmond without him. Many of us were devastated on Susan's behalf. I was the morale officer for the department, and it was my job to circulate cards for holidays, birthdays, significant occasions. And if I couldn't find a card, such as this, your cat missing in the wilds of Lake Anna, then I would make one, or I would delegate the making of one. I called Caleb down to my office and explained the situation. I said, I want you to design a card and publisher. Who remembers publisher? Anybody remember <laughs> publisher? I want black paw prints tracking across the front of the card so they look like they're tracking through the snow with the words, with deepest sympathies. And on the interior, I want you to put the words, thinking of you upon the loss of Milo. Now go. But Caleb stood in the same place. What is it, I said? What's wrong? He said, that's wrong. I said, what do you mean? Susan lost her cat. We should express our sympathy. He said, I don't know, but we don't know if Milo's dead. I said, Baba, he's been lost in the wilds of Lake Anna for two weeks. Go upstairs. <laughs> and the whole thing was escalating, right? Like I was some cranky police chief, you know, kind of, and I had a rookie defiant cop on my hands. And then I, and he says, uh, I say, he says, it's wrong. And I say, why is it wrong? And he says, because we're supposed to be people of the resurrection. We're supposed to be people of hope. And I say, Baba, you're killing me. <laughs> Go upstairs, make the card the way you think it should be, and come back. Caleb returned not that long later. On the cover, he'd left only the paw prints. 
And on the inside, he'd put these words. Waiting with you for Milo. My heart instantly seized. It wanted to break for Susan because Milo might be dead. And it wanted to fly because Milo might be alive. And it was terrorized because Milo might be alive in the wilds of Lake Anna. I looked at Caleb and he said, I just think as long as there's a chance of resurrection, we should hold on to it. It turns out that Caleb's words just might be in line with the gospel writer's motivation for ending Mark the way he did. As Christians, we are often faced with situations we find complex, frightening, amazing. Issues of racism, classism, and personal agency confound us. And we, in our fear, it can be so great, we find ourselves running. And we tell no one. But here is the good news in this, if you will, bad ending. The fear, the discomfort, the confusion, the arguing back and forth, it's all part of it. Dr. Blunt again writes, Mark understands that one of the primary obstacles, one of the primary obstacles that keeps disciples from discipleship is fear. I'm gonna, just for a moment, I want to talk about this painting by Pollard. I think this is actually getting a little bit closer to the feeling of the gospel. Uh, there are so many artistic expressions of Mark 16, of um, the angel telling the women, and it's very serene, and the women are listening, and you know, it's all very reposed. And I think that Pollard is actually getting a little bit closer to the terror of this event. Um, this is not the women leaving, it's actually the women approaching the tomb, it's them finding the stone roll, rolled away. But you see Mary Magdalene, she's dropping her spices. These women are afraid. We tell people, do not be afraid, so as to suggest that they can and should overcome their fear. By the way Mark ends his gospel, he seems to be telling us to get ready to live with fear, to live with it and respond through it. In the case of Milo, I was too scared to allow for the possibility that he might be alive, too scared of what that might mean for Susan and her family. Caleb, on the other hand, found a way to respond through it. He stood his ground and fought for the gospel. He found a way to cling to resurrection, and good thing. A couple of more weeks later, when Susan and her family returned to Lake Anna, they found Milo. <laughs> My, yeah! <laughs> he was, of course, uh, minus a few pounds, and he was a little beat up. But I thought of Baba and his insistence that in the face of uncertainty, if there was a chance of resurrection, we should hold on to it. On the one hand, it might, like, it might sound like, for a cat, all of this for a cat. But siblings in Christ, when it comes to the gospel, we have to think about its claim on our lives, all the way down to a cat. Because when it comes to the good news, there are no lessers or greaters in salvation. Jesus lived, died, and rose, not just for you and me, but the whole of creation. I want to return to Caleb's text message. I've inserted a piece I took out before. It refers to the last verse of Mark's gospel. You see there he says, they told no one? You're kidding. I've got work to do. Siblings in Christ, we all have work to do. Might we be the ones who have hope even when things seem completely hopeless? Might we be the ones who contain our discomfort, our anxiety, and lean into the thing we know and trust fully, that the gospel changed our lives, that the disciples' road makes us better, 
better parents, better partners, better supervisors, employees, teachers, gardeners, construction workers, farmers, artists, engineers, dancers. The gospel makes us better listeners, more compassionate, more generous, more loving, and way more forgiving. From the world stage of war in Ukraine, the recent earthquake in Turkey and Syria, and the COVID-19 global pandemic, to Gettysburg Presbyterian Church's ministry with migrant farmers, its music ministries, its worship, its Sunday school, its mission with youth and young adults, from the way we relate to our governments, our communities, and our families, the way we relate to the whales, the bumblebees, the sky, the water, from the greatest to the least, we have to bridle our fear. We have to ride it to proclaim the transformative power of the gospel in every single situation. Baba Caleb, J. Caleb McClure said it in his text, he has work to do. Gettysburg Presbyterian Church, you call Caleb here to do this work with you to put your feet to the disciples' road together. We cannot run away in silence. We must mount with eagle's wings and tell everyone. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we respond to the proclamation of God's word, let us stand together and affirm our faith. In life and in death, we belong to God. Through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, we trust in the one triune God, the Holy One of Israel, whom alone we worship and serve. We trust in Jesus Christ, fully human, Fully God, we trust in God, whom Jesus called Abba, Father. We trust in God, the Holy Spirit, everywhere, the giver and renewer of life. With believers in every time and place, we rejoice that nothing in life or in death can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Glory be to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Body, we have many parts, and each part has its own function. 
so all of us together with Christ are one body, and we all belong to each other. We have different gifts according to the grace God has given us. If your gift is to hear God's word, speak it out in faith. If your gift is service, if your gift is the heart of a teacher, teach what is true. Let preachers preach with conviction and givers give freely. Let officers work diligently for the people and let those who serve the poor serve gladly. Let us not lack for enthusiasm, but be ardent in spirit. The mission of God in Christ gives shape and substance to the life and work of the church. In Christ, the church participates in God's mission for the transformation of creation and humanity by proclaiming to all people the good news of God's love, offering to all people the grace of God at font and table, and calling all people to discipleship in Christ. Human beings have no higher goal in life than to glorify and enjoy God now and forever, living in covenant fellowship with God and participating in God's mission. Today we reclaim our historic calling and remember the great ends of the church, the proclamation of the gospel for the salvation of humankind the shelter, nurture, and spiritual fellowship of the children of God, the maintenance of divine worship, the preservation of the truth, the promotion of social righteousness, the exhibition of the kingdom of heaven to the world. The ministry of the church is shared by pastor and people so that all together may fulfill the mission to which we are called in Jesus Christ. The particular responsibility of the mission of a teaching elder is to build up the church and serve the people of God so that the word may be rightly proclaimed and the sacraments rightly celebrated. The call to this ministry has been extended by the congregation, accepted by the candidate, and approved by the presbytery. It's a threefold call, all parties in agreement. Therefore, the presbytery of Carlisle, by means of this commission, now installs the Reverend J. Caleb McClure as pastor of Gettysburg Presbyterian Church. At this time, the one to be installed, the moderator, the commission members, and other worship leaders, please gather down front here in this place of worship. Sounds good right there. In his baptism, Caleb was clothed with Christ he was ordained as a teaching elder by the Muskingum Valley Presbytery and is now called by God through the voice of the church to serve as pastor of this congregation. We remember with joy our common calling to serve Christ and we celebrate God's call to our brother to serve among us as a pastor. Caleb, show your purpose now by answering these constitutional questions. Do you trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, your Savior, acknowledge him Lord of all and head of the church, and through him believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? If so, say, I do. I do. Do you accept the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments to be, by the Holy Spirit, the unique and authoritative witness to Jesus Christ in the church universal, and God's word to you. If so, say, I do. I do. 
Do you sincerely receive and adopt the essential tenets of the Reformed faith as expressed in the confessions of our church as authentic and reliable expositions of what scripture leads us to believe and do? And will you be instructed and led by those confessions as you lead the people of God? If so, say, I do and I will. Will you fulfill your ministry in obedience to Jesus Christ under the authority of scripture and be continually guided by our confessions? If so, say, I will. I will. Will you be governed by our church's polity and will you abide by its discipline? Will you be a friend among your colleagues in ministry working with them, subject to the ordering of God's word and spirit? If so, say, I will. Will you in your own life seek to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, love your neighbors and work for the reconciliation of the world? If so, say, I will. I will. Do you promise to further the peace, unity, and purity of the church? If so, say, I do. I do. Will you pray for and seek to serve the people with energy, intelligence, imagination, and love? If so, say, I will. I will. And finally, will you be a faithful teaching elder, proclaiming the good news in word and sacrament, teaching faith and caring for people? Will you be active in government and discipline, serving in the councils of the church and in your own ministry? Will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ? If so, say, I will. And now some uh, questions for the congregation. Do we, the members of this church, accept Caleb as our pastor, chosen by God, through the voice of this congregation, to guide us in the way of Jesus Christ? If so, say we do. We do. Do we agree to pray for him, encourage him to respect his decisions, and to follow as he guides us, serving Jesus Christ, who alone is head of the church? If so, say we do. Do we promise to pay him fairly and provide for his welfare as he works among us, to stand by him in trouble and share his joys? Will we listen to the word he preaches, welcome his pastoral care, and honor his authority as he seeks to honor and obey Jesus Christ our Lord? If so, say we do and we will. And now I will ask Caleb to kneel and others who are here on the chancel to surround him that we might lay hands upon him and offer prayer as this ministry which has already begun takes a more official turn. <laughs> Installed. <laughs> the Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We praise you gracious Lord for you alone are God. You have made us, and we are your people, the sheep of your pasture. You have led us to green meadows by cool waters, satisfying our every need with your love. You have shown us paths that are right. Through shadowed valleys of despair, you have been our comfort and our hope. Over long generations, your presence has sustained your people. In your good time, you sent Jesus, your only beloved, to be our shepherd. He knew and loved your own, calling all who would hear to follow him. The good shepherd laid down his life for us, risking the cross for the hope of resurrection. By the power of the risen Christ, you gathered the church together to live for you in newness of life, a holy nation, a priestly family, a people chosen as your own and called, called to proclaim your marvelous love. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon Caleb this day and upon us that we may together be faithful as your people and fruitful in the ministries you have given us. 
Grant diligence to those who lead, faith to those who teach, truth to all who speak, compassion to all who heal, wisdom to those who counsel, generosity to those to give, and cheerfulness to all who serve. And especially to your servant Caleb, and to all who tend your flock as pastors among your people, give vision and strength, hospitality, humility, and peace. Bless the common ministry of this pastor and people with joy and power in the gospel. Strengthen us to live out the grace of our baptism and to serve you with the gifts of your Holy Spirit. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our only shepherd and Lord. Amen. All of you surrounding Caleb may stay right here, please. I'll invite you back. Caleb, I have the joy of sharing comments to yourself and to those that will now surround you in ministry. But before, I'll do that official part that has been mentioned. Caleb, as a teaching elder in the Church of Jesus Christ, you are now installed as pastor of this congregation on behalf of the Presbytery of Carlisle. It is a joy. Be faithful and true in your ministry so that your whole life will bear witness to the crucified and risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Congratulations. You sure you just don't want to sit down? Yeah, you want me to sit down? Yeah, sit down right there. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, it, it is my joy as the uh, moderator of the Presbytery of Carlisle to be here with all of you today to take a look at those graphics and have them come to life. Now, my first comments get to go to you, Caleb. So here's my confession. Uh, all I want to do is take my hands and run it through those waves. <laughs> I used to have waves like that. My wife Linda will tell you that. But uh, this next thing I'll share is several weeks ago when I installed a pastor, I had the joy of pointing out that he now stood in a place where a pastor stood almost 300 years earlier. And that pastor died in the pulpit. <laughs> And it's written that the church had not paid him. So wherever that fits into this group of people, just keep it light, okay? Tuck, tuck it away for a rainy day. Well, here's where I would begin for all of us. History, especially in what we call a Presbyterian tradition, runs very deep. And I know that in this place in particular, history tells me that in 1740, far from this spot, there was a log church that was built. And it tells me that this church, when it was built, uh, was the first on the corner of North Washington and Railroad Street was where that might have been built. The present building was built in 1842, which is 181 years ago, and it was replaced and improved in 1963. I recall that outside as I came in, I think I saw something that said 1994. Did I not? I see heads nodding. So having said all of those things, I had a wonderful professor in seminary that shared each and every one of us in our hearts is on a trail of salvation history. When I watched you this week come to this spot where I have now asked you to sit and that you sat with children and you were brave enough to ask them their rules <laughs> only to find out that you had to go to the bathroom in a certain place in your house. I knew that with that hair 
and with that bravery that you showed, God has the right person for the right time. So in this time, Caleb, my challenge to you comes from your own words that I have heard you say. We need to always ask ourselves the why and the way we worship. We need to ask ourselves the why and the way. Never stop doing that, Caleb. You also said to those that gathered here next to you with ears and hearts so eager to want to learn that kids, we have rules here. But I have a feeling Pastor Caleb has brought a new set of rules and guidelines. I know that because in that worship service that I saw many hairs that are not your color of hair <laughs> laughing, that they know God is at work here. And finally, my thought to you is, when it is shared that our mission is to invite people to faith in Jesus Christ, to study regularly, to pray daily, to witness boldly, live faithfully, serve passionately, and give generously. You are now called the leader to do that. My prayer for you is that in this group of people where God has placed you, that those gifts that God has already prepared within you will be well put to use. When the next verse of the song does not play, it'll work itself out. And when all of those colors of hair look at you in this spot and don't get it, God has just given you a new opportunity to say it in a different way. So Caleb, may God's grace shine on you each and every day. To you as the congregation, I've never been into this wonderful building. It's a joy that I might come here not knowing that the history is so deep that that is your focus but knowing that in watching Caleb with the children that you have been blessed with, I know that just like Milo, just waiting to be found by a loving voice, there are those that surround this place that are just waiting for Pastor Caleb with all those wonderful helpers that God has given him to reach out and love them in creative and fun ways. I know that when Pastor Caleb shares with you, constantly live and breathe faith. That's not easy. Sometimes we sit with health that is fading and Caleb will be loving in those situations, to pray for the breath to come into each of you. When Pastor Caleb says, a peace in knowing Christ when we stumble, that means on a Sunday morning when you just had a bummer of a night before, <laughs> there are all those here that will help carry you through the Lord. And when you say we must be real, about our relationships. They are sacred to be nourished and maintained, not abused. That will be how people know who we are. You have a chance to lose those waves and curls now. <laughs> you have a chance to tug at those curls, but more importantly, all of these that surround you will remind you that you can do this and they will share through whom that will happen. And finally, to this congregation, I say that when Pastor Caleb says, you shall, that's one of those words in Presbyterianism that when it says shall, we know what that means. 
Ain't no if, ands, or buts. <laughs> you shall live your faith. You shall trust in our God. You shall have an attitude of God's plan for us in our time. And when challenges come, you shall have a faith that soars like the eagles. So in this day and on this time, on a Sunday afternoon when a cell phone rings and reminds us <laughs> of the world that's out there, we never know, just like your PNC, when a young pastor with curly, lovable hair who is willing to sit and talk about toilets with children on a Sunday morning has a gift that God has given you in this place. My prayer is that each of you in this place will also give thanks in knowing that in your time, God has truly provided. May the peace of Christ be with you all. Let's all stand and sing our final hymn together. the Gettysburg Presbyterian Church, the congregation here. We are grateful to God that God has led the Reverend J. Kayla McClure here as the next senior pastor called and installed. And so we have a gift for you in true Presbyterian fashion. <laughs> it's not what you think. It's not what you think. Although you do know what they say about Presbyterians. Whenever you find four, you're fifth. bound to find a fifth, right? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. 
Caleb, we have a gift that is on the way to you. Okay. The gift is on this paper here, but it'll get here soon. Somewhere around March of 2023, the clergy tartan stole, made of wool from Scotland, will come here and have the PCUSA seal on it. And so this is for you. Hear this benediction. Siblings in Christ, the world is hoping that there is still a chance of resurrection. But you know, you know the good news. You cannot leave this place in silence. We must mount with wings of eagles and tell everyone. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, go in peace. Amen.